Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, it has to be for very sad news um, on this Halloween day, and that is that uh, Sir Sean Connery has passed away uh, at his home in the Bahamas, uh, surrounded by family and friends. Uh, his son also put out a statement saying that he had not been well for a very long time, and that they're all, you know, very saddened and everything. Obviously, it is passing, um, but. Unfortunately, it's another death video. It's another video where I try to highlight some works by people I actually really enjoy. Sean Connery was one of those actors that I did enjoy for a few different roles in his career, and I'm going to kind of try and go over as much as I can here, because his career is a very, very large one. Now, he originally started back in the 50s, but his real breakout roles really weren't until the early 1960s. Um, but Sean Connery, you know, was a leading man in, in Hollywood for a number of years. You know, he was a guy that you didn't mind having posted on a, uh, you know, on a, on a movie poster, you know, in a theater, you know, he was somebody that could draw people. Um, and that really happened in 1962 when he came out with both The Longest Day, which he was a supporting role in that, um, but still very profitable war film at the time, and also uh, Dr. No, which was the first uh, James Bond film ever. And really the, the James Bond role uh, was what Sean Connery was best known for. I think I think he did it the best out of the bunch. I think Roger Moore comes close to him. I think uh, Daniel Craig is, is a kind, semi-distant third in that conversation. Um, but at the same time, I really do enjoy his 007. The early ones, yeah, they're kind of corny at points, and, you know, the, the gadgets are kind of goofy, but that worked for back then. You know, they were great movies. I shouldn't say they were. They are great movies. Um, and I, like I said, I think they're some of the best ones that they've had with 007. Um, and I think my probably my favorite out of that would be Goldfinger, mostly because of the laser crotch scene. I think that, that's kind of fucking hilarious. Um, also, the tongue-in-cheek references, even though some of them are a bit ham-fisted, are still amusing. You know, like Pussy Galore. Um, but the... Uh, but uh, regardless of that, you know, he, he started as James Bond in seven entries because he didn't want to be upstaged by Roger Moore, who had been in seven of them, so he came back. Um, so he actually played the character from 1962, technically until 1983. Um, and like I said, seven movies, um, most of them classics, Dr. No, Goldfinger, Thunderball, um, yeah, you, I think You Only Live Twice, uh, Diamonds Are Forever, um, and then uh, Never Say Never Again, I believe, is the other uh, one that he did in the 80s. Um, but he was James Bond consistently in, before Roger Moore took over until 1971. So that took up, you know, nine years of his career, and I believe at the time it was six movies. Um, but regardless, I think he's still the king of James Bond. But that that was really what carried him through a lot of that. And then you see, uh, in the seven, in the uh, down through you know the into the mid to late seventies, um, he kind of fell off a little bit. But he was in some still good good movies. But the thing is, is that Sean Connery always liked being a leading man. Um, he claimed at one point that that was really the reason why he wanted to retire was because he couldn't really do those leading man roles anymore. Um, even though the fact of the matter is, is that he was extraordinarily good at being a supporting actor as well as being a leading man. I think he could pass us both. Um, but, you know, another one where he was a supporting character was Murder on the Orient Express, the original one. Uh, that also had... Um, Oh, God, why am I forgetting that? I think Lauren Bacall was in that. Um, you also had... Uh, the uh, actor from Psycho, I don't know why I can't remember his name, Norman Bates. Um, you had, you had a, that was a very weird kind of eclectic cast of people. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, uh, he had been cast in that. But I think he did a good job. I think it was a bit of an off tick from what he had been doing before, which again was a lot of like action y movies. Um, he returned to some of his military stuff with A Bridge Too Far, which again was a very, was a fairly good movie. I like that film. Um, but then you have kind of the middle slash, kind of the middle slash late part of his career, like right before he was going to retire uh, full time from acting, which he did in 2020, uh, 2012. Um, but, you know, through the, from the mid to the late 80s, there were two entries that I really like him in, and one that actually won him his only Oscar, which is for a best supporting role in The Untouchables, um, which I think that's warranted. I like that. Uh, I like that movie. It's a little bit of a. It, it has a little bit of 80s and a little bit of 90s in it. It kind. It looks very much like a 90s film, even though it's set in, you know, the 40s. I'm talking about in terms of a 
visually how it looks in terms of aesthetically how it looks, um, if that makes sense. Um, but it has kind of those like 80s, like gumshoe type of things where, you know, he's got the guys lying on the ground and he's pointing a gun up at him as he's like stopping a baby carriage. He's like, I got him. It, you know, it's stuff like that, stuff like that that was kind of corny that was that was really, uh, you know, kind of dying out a little bit in the late 80s uh, when that film came out. And then it has, a, like I said, it has a little bit of that, you know, late 80s, early 90s type of aesthetic look. Um, but I do really like that film. I like his character in that film, uh, Jim Malone. I think that he does a, a good job of that. And then obviously the what happens to that character in that movie, uh, which I don't really, even though it's a movie that's like over 30 years old at this point. I don't think I have to worry about spoilers, but his character does die in the film, and I think the death scene they do with him is very good. Um, and it does show that they were willing to kill off somebody major, because I don't think anybody really in that movie expected them to kill uh, Sean Connery, of all people. Um, you know, maybe the... maybe jo I think Joey from Friends is another person who's in that as well. Uh, maybe expect him to get killed off rather than that. Um, but regardless, uh, that my... Actually, the role that I like him more in, uh, even though The Untouchables did win him an Oscar, was his role as Ramirez in Highlander. Um, Highlander is probably my favorite, you know, fantasy, like, sword and sorcery. Well, I shouldn't say sorcery, even though it's kind of magical. Um, but sword and sorcery type of a story. Um, I really do like the aesthetic of Highlander. I like the main protagonist. I like the antagonist. And as Ramirez, you know, Sean Connery as Ramirez, I think did a great job in that because he plays a very good mentor. And even though, obviously, you know, the swordsmanship stuff is kind of goofy, and in, in some scenes it's very obvious they're using a stunt double for uh, Sean Connery, um, I think that I like his character in it. I like his motivations in it. I like the fact that he's this person who's, he's, you know, he says he's Egyptian, but he talks like a Scotsman. Uh, but he's been around for so long. He's been around for thousands of years because he's an, he's an, an older immortal as opposed to Connor McLeod, who's very recent, uh, at least in terms of his timeline, and how he carries, you know, the, this prototype katana that's awesome that he eventually gives to Connor. I, I really do enjoy uh, his character. And then also the, there's the goofiness of it. He always has a smile on his face. He's always screwing with him. Uh, dumps him off the boat and has him walk on the bottom of the water because he realizes he can't drown, he can't die. Um, I really do enjoy that about it. And you know, even a, a year later too, when he was in... Um, or sorry, not a year later, but um, a year later after Untouchables when he was in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which again, I think that that's really, a, his interactions with Harrison Ford in that film are really what make that movie worth watching. Um, it, it's an amazing film, and I can't, uh, it, it, it's one of the best third movies, I think, of out of any franchise. Um, I don't think you can say that about Return of the Jedi. I don't think you can say it about, you know, maybe Return of the King. I think you might be able to say that, even though Return of the King is is a slog to sit through with a four-hour runtime. Um, but, you know, you can look at other third films in a franchise, you know, Godfather 3. Look at other third films in a franchise, and to be able to make something that's that good and that compelling and have that relationship between uh, Indy and his father to be... Uh, very or it feels very organic. They they made it very possible that both of them were father and son, and even all the you know all the dad things you know like in, in revealing like embarrassing things about him, like how he, he he came up with his nickname Indiana because that's what they named the dog, um, you know goofy stuff like that, or how he takes out the the Nazi. Uh, the Nazi plane that's trying to strafe him on the beach by scaring up all the seagulls into it. Um, you know, some of that stuff is kind of goofy, but it, it's it's really good. And then on top of that, the the scene where he thinks that uh, Indy has died with the the whole thing with the tank, um, and he's just crying and stuff, and then he just comes up next to him. <laughs> he's just standing there. He's looking like, what are you looking at? Um, I love that scene. I love Sean Connery's reactions in that scene. And the thing is, in that movie, he's not playing your prototypical tough guy. He's, he's a bit more of a uh, a sensitive intellectual, I guess you, you would call him in that film. I mean, even though there there's a lot of stuff, it's like you know him and in, him and Harrison Ford bicker like an old married couple, and it's awesome. Um, you know, he wound up being in Robin Hood, uh, Prince of Thieves, even though he was uncredited for that. Um, the Hunt for Red October, which was the first of the Jack Ryan series of films, uh, where Alec Baldwin was playing at the time. Uh, actually, maybe it was Daniel Baldwin. I can't remember. Was playing at the time the uh, 
the Jack Ryan character before Harrison Ford would take it over in the next previous in the following two entries. Um, but Sean Connery plays the captain of Red October, which is a Russian submarine, and he does great in this thriller, even though uh, it is kind of weird hearing him try to uh, pronounce a Russian accent. Um, we're not going to talk about Highlander 2 because nobody wants to talk about Highlander 2, but then you have kind of the end of his career, and uh, the end of his career had some had some interesting ones. You know, you had Entrapment, which was kind of a weird one. The Rock, uh, which was actually Michael Bay's first film. Uh, the uh, he was also in the uh, film interpretation of the the Avengers, which was an old television show, not the Marvel one. Um, and then I think kind of the the cornerstone that capped all of that off is uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which is which is laughable in most of its attempt. I'm I'm honestly surprised he signed on for that. Um, but the thing is, is that maybe it was because he was going to be playing Alan Quartermain, and Alan Quartermain is more of a an English uh, type of a type of a hero. It comes from English folklore for the most part, although a lot of characters um, in the original uh, actually do come from English folklore um, and various things like that, like Mister Hyde, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, that kind of thing. Um, but like I said, you know, even though the end of his career was filled with some films that are meh, they, you can't ignore the massive amount of things that he did in his career for, you know, good film projects and things that impacted people um, and things that impacted the industry and changed things. You know, we're still seeing James Bond movies. That's probably never going to stop, even though we've had five or six actors that have played the part. Um, and none of them other have measured up completely anyway, at least in my opinion, to Sean Connery. Um, it's also good to note that he was uh, knighted in the year 2000, so he is known as Sir Sean Connery, um, or was, I should say, but um, yeah, that, that's just kind of some things I wanted to go over uh, about Sean Connery and some of the, the movies that I enjoyed him in from his career, um, especially stuff like Highlander, but um, I want to know what you think. What's your favorite Sean Connery film? Uh, you know, do you... Uh, do you think he deserved, you know, more recognition from the Academy? I personally do. Um, and, uh, you know, just anything you want to say about him, you know, put it in the comments below. As usual, I like to know what you're thinking. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?